Hey guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna be giving you guys all of the crochet insiders information i guess i'm gonna be giving you guys all the tips all the tricks all the materials all the tutorials all of that i'm gonna be giving you guys all of the information that you need to learn how to crochet while i'm not going to be teaching you guys how to crochet in this video i am going to be giving you guys videos to teach yourself how to crochet and i'm also going to give you guys just all of the little details that you need that nobody really tells you that you kind of have to figure out by yourself i'll tell you I'll tell you. So let me tell you guys how this video is going to be organized. So first I'm going to start off by giving you guys all the materials that you'll need to start crocheting. And I have all the links and all of the products listed below as well as products for different preferences, products for different price points, all of that. And then we'll move into the videos that you need to watch to learn how to crochet. So like the basic stitches that you'll need. And then from there you'll be able to build into more intricate designs. Then we'll get into some beginner friendly projects that you guys can start with. I'm also going to be sharing the videos that I use when I learned how to crochet and the projects that I started with and then lastly we'll go into just some tips and tricks so while we do this i am going to be crocheting one of my custom orders so if you already are crocheting you're trying to build on your skills go get your crochet project if you're trying to learn how to crochet go get your notepad and some snacks just sit down cozy up and i'm going to give you guys everything that you need to know this is how to crochet 101 so starting off strong with materials the first and most important thing that you'll need is of course crochet hooks now there's different types of crochet hooks for different types of preferences personally i like using aluminum crochet hooks but that's just because that's what i started with i really think what you start with is what you will prefer so this is your chance to know what you want to start with because i didn't know what i want to start with and i wish i would have started with the rubber ones because they're better for your hands but i started with these so now when i crochet with the rubber ones it's just is hard so there's two types of crochet hooks there's aluminum crochet hooks and there's the rubber handle crochet hooks there's also wooden crochet hooks and all of that stuff but don't use those they're cute and aesthetic and good for the environment but like they're really bad the two types of crochet hooks that you can use are the aluminum and the rubber like i said and the aluminum is a cheaper i'm pretty sure and b it's a little bit smaller so that's why i prefer them because with the rubber ones your, your your grip has to be a little bit bigger but with the aluminum your grip is a little bit smaller whereas with the rubber i wish i had the rubber with me i actually ended up <laughs> giving them all away because i did not like them but the rubber ones are better for your grip because when you're crocheting you tend to hold your crochet hook a little bit tight and it can cause a lot of hand cramps and long-term damaging effects so please be mindful of that the way that i hold my crochet hook i don't hold it like a lot of people do i kind of like found my own way to hold it that i don't get any hand cramps or any hand problems but with the way that you're probably going to learn you you might get hand cramps so be mindful of that which is why i think that you should go with the rubber hooks but if you are looking for something cheaper i would say go with the aluminum hooks and if you're also not sure if you want to crochet in the long term go with the aluminum hooks because you're saving more money and whatever 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 so those are the two types of hooks you guys can do a little bit more research into them if you're really that interested but i would recommend the rubber hooks even though i prefer these but that's just because i learned with these but i think the rubber hooks are better for you in the long term but i linked both of them in the description box so you guys can figure out which one you want more the next thing you will need is darning needles so darning needles are basically like sewing needles but a little bit bigger so you can fit your yarn through them and these are really really important these are a necessity i use them to sew projects together you use them to weave in your loose ends you use them for everything so you definitely 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 need darning needles and they are very very hard to keep up with I have bought so many packs of darning needles and lost every single one right now I probably only have two out of like the 200 that I've bought so I would say get like a little case for them or something to keep track of them because they're so easy to lose they literally just disappear and I don't know how but please keep track of them because they will disappear but they are very very important the next thing you'll need are scissors of course you don't need to go out and buy scissors if you already have scissors but if you want to be bougie and fancy you can buy some crafting scissors I used the little these little ones that i got from hobby lobby but i linked some down below from amazon next thing you need this one is kind of optional because i don't really use measuring tape the only thing i use measuring tape for is if i have custom orders and they give me their measurements but typically if you're just making items for yourself or family members or like people that you can physically touch you really don't need measuring tape because you can just chain the length that you need for their body or for whatever you need so it's optional if you don't want to go out and buy measuring tape you do not have to i don't think that it's that necessary but it's just good to have if you ever need it and then lastly stitch markers stitch markers are also a little bit optional because instead of stitch markers you can actually use other things like bobby pins or scrap yarn or hair ties there's so many alternatives to stitch markers so if you want to save a little bit of coin don't buy no stitch markers you really don't need them they're not that necessary but they are nice to have again i lose every single stitch marker ever in the world so i don't use stitch markers i use like yarn and 
other things like that i'm just telling you it's really not that necessary now if you want to buy all of these things for a little bit cheaper you can buy it in a kit which is honestly what i wish i would have done because i think buying things in a kit is way cheaper than buying them all separate i haven't done the math but i recommend buying a kit to be honest because it really comes with everything you need but be mindful of the kit that you buy because some kits come with all this extra stuff that you do not need when you're looking for a kit i linked one in the description for one with the rubber hooks and one with the aluminum hooks so you can choose based off whatever hook you want I'm not even crocheting anyways but be mindful of the kit that you buy because you don't want to buy a kit with a bunch of stuff that you're never going to use and it just sits under your bed for the next three years i'm talking from experience when you're buying a kit look for all of the things that i just listed so look for it has multiple sizes of hooks it has darning needles it has stitch markers it has scissors and it has measuring tape anything more than that is not necessary you do not need all the little yarns that come in them you do not need actually don't know what else comes in a crochet hook. so just look for a kit that has the bare necessities so you can save a little bit of coin and also so you don't just have a surplus of items that you don't need and another alternative if you're just looking to try out crocheting you don't really want to buy all these things you can go to you can even go on amazon but i would suggest going to a craft store you can buy just one crochet hook and start with there if you're gonna buy one crochet hook buy a five millimeter crochet hook crochet hooks have the size on the side of the handle and it'll give you the size so right now I'm using a 5.75 millimeter hook so if you're looking for just one crochet hook that you want to use just to try out crocheting buy one that just says 5 mm because that's the standard size for most yarns I got you so now that we have our materials that we need to crochet we're gonna get into our materials that we need to actually crochet aka yarn so this is a little bit of a touchy subject for some but i'm gonna tell you guys what i suggest and honestly you don't need to listen to nobody else because i'm about to put y'all on you do not listen to anybody else don't listen to anybody else listen to me i got you i got you so this was really difficult for me when i was starting to crochet because i didn't know what the good yarn was i didn't want nothing expensive i didn't want no i, I just wanted some yarn i didn't really care so i'm gonna tell you guys the good yarns the cheap yarns the bad yarns all of that from every place that you can buy yarn i'm gonna tell you guys i'm gonna tell you guys right now so i till this day i go to hobby lobby to buy my yarn a because it is so soft such good quality i mean at least the brand that i use it is such good quality it is soft it is cheap and every other week hobby lobby is on sale so it's extra cheap every other week and the yarn that i use this is the yarn i use so if you go to hobby lobby and you spot this label that's what you're looking for this is the best yarn i think that's out i love this yarn so much i love their whole line so hold on i'm getting too excited okay there's multiple types of yarn there's acrylic yarn there's cotton yarn there's chunky yarn there's so many types of yarn but the three that you really need to know is acrylic cotton and chunky so acrylic yarn is the yarn i'm using it's the yarn that you'll typically see it's typically bigger it's pretty soft depending on what brand you get and it's the yarn that you'll use for most projects such as sweaters hats scarves etc and it's definitely your safest bet if you're looking for some good beginner friendly yarn but the only downfall to acrylic is it's typically more stiff so if you want to make something like a flowy skirt or a top or just something that you don't want to be stiff acrylic yarn is not really your best friend that's where we get into cotton yarn cotton yarn is i do not have an example with me but cotton yarn is typically in smaller packs it is a little bit softer and it's not stiff at all it's very loose actually and it's typically a little bit thinner you'll notice the texture like the difference in texture so if you go to a craft store and you look at acrylic yarn versus cotton yarn you'll be able to tell the difference based off the look and the texture and cotton yarn you use mostly for things like tops maybe a skirt typically smaller clothing pieces get made with acrylic versus bigger clothing pieces like sweaters and things like that get made with acrylic really it's based on whatever you want i would say whatever the pattern calls for is what you should use but once you start crocheting and making products and getting used to yarns you'll know what you want don't stress about it too much now because it's really not that important right now right now all you need to do is learn how to crochet but i just want to tell you guys like just so it stays in the back of your mind and then lastly there's chunky yarn which this one is kind of self-explanatory you can use it for literally whatever you want it's just bigger i use it for like chunky bucket hats or chunky sweaters basically if you want something to be chunky go for chunky yarn so those are the three most important types of yarn the rest you can figure out throughout your crocheting career i haven't even really figured it all out i just i stick to my acrylic and cotton and chunky i don't really i don't really mix it up like that but those are the three types of yarn that you want to look for as a beginner really as a beginner if you really just want to get right to it you don't care acrylic acrylic and chunky don't worry about cotton right now you can worry about cotton later on 
but if you really just want to figure out like okay what do i need right now i don't care about all that extra stuff acrylic and chunky now there's multiple places that you can purchase yarn like i said my favorite is hobby lobby and then if hobby lobby's closed or if i don't like or if you don't have a hobby lobby joann's is your next bet no joann's your next bet is michael's no michael's your next bet is walmart no walmart your last bet is amazon unfortunately so I went ahead and linked all of my favorite acrylic, cotton, and chunky yarns from all of these stores. I'm telling you guys right now, please pick Hobby Lobby first. Hobby Lobby is your best bet and get I love this blank yarn. They have I love this acrylic yarn, they have I love this cotton yarn, and they have I love this chunky yarn. It's cheap, it's good quality, and it's local if you live in a place that has a Hobby Lobby. But if you can't go to Hobby Lobby, you can go to Joann's. Joann's is also a pretty good option. The only issue I have with Joann's is their yarn quality is not as good as Hobby Lobby in my opinion. Their price are a little bit higher but they do have really good coupons on the app so download the app and look for some yarn coupons because they typically have some pretty good deals on there but that's my next bet i like their big twist yarn i don't really use their cotton yarn but i linked some that i've worked with before that i think is good and then your next bet is michael's i do not like michael's if i'm being honest their selection is not very good and they're really expensive in my opinion. But if you have a Michaels, I linked some yarns you can get from there. And then Walmart. I actually have worked with Walmart yarn before and I used to work with it frequently when I was a beginner. Their yarn is pretty good. It's not the best quality, but it's definitely not the worst. It's pretty soft. It's a little bit rough, but it's, it's soft for the most part, at least for the price, it's pretty good. And it's a safe bet. And then lastly, Amazon. Amazon is just expensive. I don't really know. And their yarn sucks. So try to stay away from Amazon if you can. All right, now that you know all about the yarn, I'm gonna give you guys some videos you can watch if you wanna learn how to crochet. So start off with my video and, start off with my video, shameless plug. Start off with my video and just gather all of your materials. And once you have your materials, this is your next step. You're gonna go on YouTube because visual learning is, in my opinion, or at least, no, let me not, let me not be biased here. I personally think that visual learning is the best for me. If you are a better learner by reading things, then you can search up patterns, but I prefer visually seeing someone do it. I mean, I think physically learning, like having someone there with you is the best, but of course not all of us are gonna have somebody with us learning. I didn't, so I learned visually through YouTube videos and I linked down below all the videos that you'll need. So I gave you guys the three stitches that you're gonna use in every project. The only difference or the only thing that'll change is there'll be variations of all of the stitches to create a different kind of stitch, if that makes sense. I don't really know if that makes sense, but basically these are the three core stitches that you will need to know and then you can build upon that later. You'll see when you start to crochet, you'll see what I'm talking about. But in most projects, you're either gonna use single crochet half double crochet or double crochet and i linked three very 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 good videos for all these things i made sure i watched them and ensured that they were very slow and very explained and, and, and good i made sure they were good you can trust my i'm a reliable source y'all i'm a reliable source but before you learn any of that you have to learn how to chain and chaining is just your base it's just the base that you build upon and it's it's easy you got it you got it in the bag it's easy you can do it so i linked how to chain how to single crochet how to half double crochet how to double crochet and then i also linked how to change a color so you see how i have multiple colors on my sweater i went ahead and linked how you guys can do color changes in your projects and then i linked how to end your work so like whenever you're done crocheting how do you how do you take the yarn off and you're done. I linked a video on how to fasten off, which is basically just tie off and be done with your project. And then lastly, I linked a video on how to weave in your loose ends. And this is where you get your darning needle, the sewing needle I told you guys about earlier. And you just sew your, your loose ends so that you don't have just a random piece of yarn out. You sew it into your project so it's not seen and it's hidden and it'll secure your project. I linked a video on how to do that as well. And then lastly, I linked a video on how to do a method that's called the magic ring. And typically with this method, you're gonna use this to make circular projects. This felt impossible when I was a beginner. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Magic rings felt literally impossible when I was a beginner. I remember when I was a beginner and they were telling me to do a magic ring. I was reading the comments and the comments were like, I'm literally never gonna get this down. I'm never gonna be able to do this. And then there was also comments that were like, I remember when I was a beginner and I thought I would never be able to do this. And I remember just sitting there like, I'm never gonna get this. But now I got it. I got it down. It's easy. It's real easy. It's real easy. So you guys can get it down too. But it's just something that's used when you crochet in the round, which is basically when you crochet circular items like bucket hats, circular coasters, just anything that's circular, you're going to use a magic ring. But there's methods 
that you can use to avoid this. And typically when you watch a tutorial, they'll show you how to do a magic ring without doing a magic ring, if you get what I'm saying. But I would say go in on, go into the deep end and try your best to learn how to use a magic ring because it is way better than the other methods that are out there. And once you get it down, you get it down and you'll feel so accomplished. So do not feel horrible that you can't get it down because I'm telling you guys, it took me years. Well, no, it didn't take me years. It took me months and like probably a year of just trying and trying and trying and trying until I got the magic ring down. So don't feel intimidated because you'll get it. You will get it. I'm telling you, I couldn't get it for the longest, but then I got it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Literally, if I can do it, you can do it. Now we're gonna get into some beginner friendly projects that you guys can do. The most beginner friendly project I think is things like scarves and coasters and whatnot, but those are so boring. I didn't wanna do that when I was a beginner. And I know you probably don't wanna do that as a beginner. I know you wanna make a sweater. I know you do, I know you do you can't do that yet but when I was a beginner it was just like a lot of boring stuff that I really didn't want to do but all the other stuff was just so hard so what I ended up making for my first project was a bucket hat and I actually didn't mind a bucket hat because while I probably was never gonna wear it it was way more fun and like way better than a scarf like I just didn't want to make anything boring so I ended up going with a bucket hat and I think a bucket hat is a really good beginner friendly project because if I'm being honest it's not the most beginner friendly which means that if you do that for your first project, you're set to do anything. I really like to dive into the deep end with things because I feel like when you start off with something hard, everything else after that is just so easy. So I think a bucket hat is a good place to start because it's not super hard, but it's also not super easy because there's increases and decreases and working in the round and magic ring and all these things are kind of hard, not gonna lie, they're a little bit difficult. And so if you do them as a beginner, I feel like it'll set you up for success. At least it set me up for success. I mean, look at me. Look at me, you know? So I think a bucket hat is a good place to start because it has a multitude of different techniques that you'll need throughout your crochet career. So I definitely think starting with a bucket hat is a good safe bet. But if you think a bucket hat's a little boring, I think the next safe bet is a granny square bucket hat. This is another project that I made when I was a beginner and it was so ugly. It was so bad. It was so bad, but I'm telling you guys, I was so proud of myself. I was so proud of myself it literally took me like four days and i was so proud of myself i was so proud of myself when it was done it didn't even fit on my head but i'm telling you guys i felt so good when it was done and it looked cool and this is also one that's not super beginner friendly so it has things like color changes granny squares sewing together and things like that that also help you further down in your crochet career so that's another really fun project to do. And then if you want something a little less advanced, if you're not trying to dive into the deep end, the next project is a tank top. This is the easiest project you can ever make and it's wearable, which is so fun. So a tank top is literally just a square. You just crochet a square. It's really boring. I'm not gonna lie, it's really boring, but it looks cool and it's cute and it's very beginner friendly. So I recommend crocheting a tank top. I crocheted a tank top when I was a beginner and it literally looked so good. It, um, well, it didn't look that good but it looked really good for a beginner i wish i had a picture but i was just so ashamed of all of my beginner projects that i deleted every single one every single thing that i documented as a beginner i deleted because i was just so embarrassed so please don't do that please keep all your we'll get into that later but yeah a tank top is a really really safe bet for beginners along with that is a cat beanie and i feel like this is a really fun one i wish this was around when i was a beginner but when i was a beginner cat beanies didn't really i don't even think they existed because it was like three or four years ago and so I don't think they were popular yet. I didn't really know what they were. I didn't even know they existed. But now they're real cute and real poppin' and they're so cute. And it's winter time now, so it's the perfect time to make one. And I just love cat beanies. You can make them in one color, you can make them in multiple colors, you can make them ribbed, you can make them regular. There's so many different ways to make cat beanies and they're so easy. They look complicated, but I'm telling you guys, it's literally a square. And then when you put it on your head, it creates two little ears. It's just a square. It's a square. That's it. You crochet a literal square and then you put it on your head. It is so easy and it is really, really fun because it's so easy. The next project is a coaster. Coasters are actually really cute. I'm not gonna lie. Coasters are pretty cute. And this is one of those projects that I would make with a cotton yarn because cotton yarn is better with water. So like things like a bikini and a coaster and things that are gonna get wet, I would say use cotton yarn. That's a that's an example of what to, when to use acrylic and cotton. If you're gonna get it wet, use cotton. But coasters are really easy and quick and cute and it'll it's very 
encouraging to crochet a project that's quick so i definitely recommend a coaster if you're looking for like something that's quick and easy and you just want to see the results immediately a coaster a really good fun one and then lastly a beanie i'm telling you guys hats are just the most beginner friendly best projects to start with a beanie is a really good one it's just that a beanie is kind of boring because a beanie is a square which is weird to think about especially if you've never crocheted a beanie a beanie is literally a square and then you sew it together and then you put it on your head it's a little weird to explain but beanies they're they're really really beginner friendly and it's a really good way to practice your stitches because you're just doing the same stitch back and forth back and forth but it can get a little bit boring if i'm being honest so just be mindful of that so those are all of my beginner friendly projects that i would recommend now let's get into some tips and tricks and things to remember when you're learning how to crochet so my first tip for all of my aspiring crocheters is to find a good long show to watch while you're doing this 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 is so important i'm telling this is so important, I'm telling you guys. Whenever I first started learning how to crochet, I watched the whole Manifest series from season one all the way to whatever season there is now. And this literally kept me holding on. I'm telling you guys, there's something... I don't know the science. I don't know the science, but I'm telling you guys, there has to be a science that whenever you're crocheting something or doing something and watching something at the same time, you now associate this thing that you're watching with what you're doing. So now the two are interlinked. So like when you're out and about doing your thing, you're like, dang, I can't wait to go home, watch my show and crochet. It's just, it's interlinked. Am I crazy? I swear. But I recommend finding a good long show that you can just sit back, it's entertaining, and you can work on your project. This will make it less dreadful and just a little bit more fun. My next tip, oh my god. My next tip is kind of, my next tip is kind of to help encourage you guys. It's something I still do to this day because I'm learning how to knit and it's just bringing me back to learning how to crochet and it's traumatizing. But one of my favorite things to do when I'm trying to learn how to do something and it's getting a little bit difficult, I'm getting a little discouraged, I'm feeling like I don't want to do this anymore, is to seek out people who I relate to. So my favorite thing to do is to go on TikTok or go on YouTube or any platform and just search other people learning how to do what I'm trying to learn how to do. So I would go on TikTok and search crocheting my first project or learning how to crochet or things like that. And this encourages me so much because I see other people struggling and it makes me feel better it makes me feel like I'm not so alone in it and that it is hard and I am learning how to do something that is hard and I'm, I'm not the problem the hobby is the problem it's not me it's 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 this it's not me it's this this is hard not me so I like to watch lots of videos and it's, this is like especially good when I just like I'm just like oh my gosh I can't and then I just go on my phone instead of just scrolling mindlessly and doom scrolling I search crocheting for the first time crocheting this learning how to crochet all these things and this encourages me so much because then i'm like okay i see that they struggled and look at them now like they're so good and they're so skilled and it only took them this amount of time and it encourages me so 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 much and then i get right back to it because like i could i'm like okay this could be me in such and such amount of time if i just keep going like she did or like he did and then i'm like okay back to it and then i feel good so i definitely recommend looking seeking out and just searching for other people that also struggle so y'all can struggle together and then y'all can improve together and it just makes you feel better my next tip is that whenever you're learning how to crochet or whenever you're crocheting buy multiple colors of yarn at least two because when you're just working with one color of yarn you'll get bored you will get bored and you'll get bored of the color you'll get bored of the project you'll look at the color and you'll be like ew like i'm never ever gonna wear this i'm never ever gonna use this color again i hate it so much so i definitely recommend getting multiple colors so that you don't get bored with the one color that you're using my next tip is to create a pinterest board for all of the crochet projects that you want to make again so you have something to look forward to whenever you are skilled enough to make these projects so i have a pinterest board full of crochet ideas if you guys want to check it out and i just organize them into like bags sweaters hats things like that and whenever i go through this pinterest board i'm like wow i can't wait till i can crochet these things and i have the time to sit down and make these it just gets you excited it gets you excited it gets you looking forward to things and it makes you a little bit more motivated to continue that project my next tip is something i really 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 wish i would have done and i beg you to do it for me do it for me do it for me please is to document your process take pictures take videos just make sure that you have your process and your growth documented so that you can go back and you can be like wow i really i really grew so much from that point and you can be you can feel a sense of pride you can feel proud of yourself i really wish i would have done this because there's so many times 
where I want to look back at all the projects that I started with but they're in the trash or they're in the deleted section of my phone gone gone from the cloud or they're sold or they're just gone and I really wish I could go back and just look at my progress because I've made so 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 much progress but I don't even know like I don't even recognize and I, I don't even realize how much progress I've made because I don't have any documentation of when I was a beginner so please just even like just keep it in your folder or your phone just Put it in your hidden section of your phone if you don't even want to see it just don't delete it keep it because you will want you will look back at your progress and you will be so proud of yourself and you'll feel so good my next tip is one that i honestly probably struggled with is don't start with the projects that you really want to do because i know you want to make a sweater and i know you want to make a dress and i know you want to make some trousers and i know you want to make all the a blanket i know you want to make all these fun 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 projects but save your time because you are just you're not it's no it's not a good idea it's not a good idea start with small items that you can make quickly and easily and then when you're ready you can now go into the sweaters and the blankets because what's going to end up happening is you're going to get frustrated because a it's taking too long b it's too hard and c you're not getting results you're not getting the results that you want so just save your time because if you end up making something that's a little bit too hard for you it can discourage you from crocheting period so just start with small projects don't start with that sweater as much as i know you want to wait crochet a little bit before and then you can be like okay it's time it's time i can crochet my sweater like i'm ready and you'll feel good about it so just wait my next tip is something i do to this day and i love doing this is taking my projects everywhere i go so if i'm going to school or if I'm going to a vacation, or if I'm just going to Walmart, or anywhere I go, I bring my projects with me so I can crochet either in the car, or either when I get bored, or when I have a little free time. I love to bring my projects with me because I get them done faster, and it also, it would just, it, it develops my, my love for crocheting because now I'm never bored. Like if you ever go somewhere and you're like, dang, and then you just end up like doom scrolling on your phone, or like say your phone's dead, you just don't know what to do, you're bored. Bring your crochet projects with you, even if you, don't use it it's just good to have because it's there if you ever want to use it if you ever need it and it's just it's it's a way to get practice in so if you're super busy and you want to learn how to crochet but you just never have the time bring your projects with you so you can crochet on the go and you have more time to practice because you can use it in your free time or if you're crocheting a project like a big project like a sweater that you don't have the time to sit down and crochet bring it with you on the go so you can crochet a little bit at a time i'm telling you guys you won't regret it i love doing this it's literally the best time killer it is so fun and i just get so much done my next little trick or tip i don't really know but it's if you have a local hobby lobby and you're gonna buy your yarn from hobby lobby they have yarn sales bi-weekly i already mentioned this earlier but every other week their yarn is 30 percent off and this is when i go to hobby lobby and stack up on all the yarn i need because i'm saving a little bit of money so every other week just check online and see which week they are on sale they'll have a 30 percent off every bi-weekly without fail every other week they have 30% off their yarn so keep that in mind it's the same thing with like their fabrics and stuff so whenever you see like Hobby Lobby's on sale like blank percent off don't like freak out because you feel like it's like oh crap like they're, they're on sale I gotta hurry up and get no girl it's every other week without fail it will be on sale next week don't worry my next little tip is like I said earlier don't buy yarn packs online I bought a pack of yarn online because I was like oh my gosh all this yarn for only 15 bucks duh I'm gonna buy it this is what I mean don't buy these do not buy these they're like literally this big and they're the worst kind of yarn ever you can't even crochet like a square with them don't buy it just go just go to the, your local craft store and buy a regular sized ball of yarn i'm telling you guys it's it's way better don't waste your time don't waste your money and then my last tip is do not give up i know i know it's cliche you hate to hear it but i'm telling you guys had i given up every time i wanted to give up i would not be here i would not have a small business i would not be able to fund my life i would not be here recording for you guys i would not be here telling you tips you don't know how far you will get if you give up so never give up don't give up keep going keep trying keep working if you ever need a little bit of encouragement you guys can watch my videos i post crochet videos vlogs crochet tutorials all of these things if you ever need a little bit of encouragement you can watch my videos see how i'm doing and be like dang i want to be crochet like her and you can crochet don't give up please don't give up it's 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 really it's not worth it don't give up and that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys have any questions or any tips that you have to give to other beginner crocheters that are watching this video put them in the comments help us help each other out we're all one big community and i'm just so happy that i can be here to teach you guys everything that i've learned so i love you guys so much i will see you guys soon for the next video and until then bye also if you guys are learning how to crochet and you are growing and improving come back to this video and comment every time you can be like oh my gosh i crocheted my first bucket hat or okay i'm learning how to crochet i'll come back in x amount of 
time and tell you how I'm doing. Please, I want to see you guys' progress. I love seeing, I love just, I love hearing from you guys, to be honest. So you can always come back here for some encouragement. I'll be here. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon. Bye. Thanks for watching.